that is a dangerous and growing inequality and lack of upward mobility that has jeopardized middle class America's basic bargain, that if you work hard, you have a chance to get ahead. President Obama this week blasting income inequality, but are his policies to blame? Hi, everybody. I'm David Aspen. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. Let's go in focus with Steve Forbes, Rich Carlgaard, Elizabeth McDonald, John Tamney, Rick Unger, and Mike Ozanian. So, Steve, have his policies helped or hurt income disparity? Uh, David, it's, it's hurt. This is the most miserable recovery in American history. Median incomes are lower today than they were five years ago. The combination of the uncertainty of Obamacare, horrific tax code, and uh, what the Federal Reserve has done to the dollar, punk recovery, less opportunity for people to rise up. And Rick, he is criticizing something that's happened under his watch. Yeah, here's, here's the problem that I have. First of all, and, and John Tanney will love hearing me say this, I'm not sure that government is a big answer when it comes to income inequality. We are all happy to hear I, you say I that, you Rick. Every be. one I of us. I you would be. But here's the problem. Most people analyze this in terms of, do you think Obama's policies produce growth? Was he anti-growth? Growth is actually not the issue because it only matters if it's shared. So if, if a company that's making $14 billion in profits this year makes $20 billion next year, what's the difference if they don't share the benefit. That's what income inequality is. All right, is. but John, it is kind of the issue because sometimes a rising tide lifts all boats, to quote John F. Kennedy, Rick's favorite pre president. And if it's you look at what happened under the Reagan uh, term, look at what happened. Both the lower quintile, the lower 20 percent and the top 20 percent increased by double digits during the Reagan growth period after those tax rate cuts. Well, I'm one of those people who believes that income inequality is unrelentingly beautiful. When income inequality expands, that means that lifestyle inequality is shrinking because people generally grow rich by virtue of mass producing that which was formerly only available to the rich people. And so the problem with Obama's policies is they're not producing enough inequality, and that's given us slow growth and a great deal less lifestyle enhancements for those not rich. But Rich, the bottom line is, is that when you have a slow economy like we've had or like we had in the 70s, the rich very often get richer, but the poor get poor. That didn't happen during the Reagan era, did it? No, it didn't. And look, it's not just the Obama administration's fault. It's the Bush administration's fault. The cheap dollar policy creates financial bubbles. Who can take advantage of financial bubbles? The rich. The poor always have to sell out at the bottom. Number one. Number two, the regulatory creep you know, that occurred under Bush and has accelerated under Obama has made it very difficult to expand in areas where you typically find high-wage blue-collar jobs mm -hmm. in transportation, energy extraction, and so on. So, you know, uh, I hope Rick will be pleased to hear that I'm not blaming this entirely on President Obama. <laughs> well, I, on the other hand, Mike, President Obama's solution to all this, and it's not just President Obama, they're saying it in Europe, the IMF is saying it everywhere, is to have this global wealth tax to tax the rich more to bring the rich down that will help income disparity what do you think of that plan well uh, as we've seen under president obama david the exact op opposite happens one of the areas where Obama has really hurt the economy is with small businesses. His investment tax increase really hurt small business. It went from 40, 35 percent to 43 percent on passive income. This really is unusual. During expansions, you typically see new business startups accelerate. This is the only recovery I've seen going back to the 1930s where new business startups have completely flatlined. And when you increase tax rates on small businesses, you don't get that capital. All that money that right. Rick is talking about that needs to be spent invested yeah. into new businesses that's the genesis of economic growth well, capital uh, investment okay and emac while small businesses are getting hurt the big businesses have been doing fine in fact look what happened with the obama recovery compared to the bush expansion the top one percent we're hearing a lot about them during the obama administration they expanded they they had an expansion of 65 percent during bush during the obama so-called recovery look at how much they got 93 percent yeah so the rich have all these special deals which is helping them get more money while the poor are losing
Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And, and here's the thing. You know, we see time and again these politicians say, you know what, we do want to get pro-growth economic policies. But all of a sudden they show up in Washington, D.C., and I think they get some kind of Stockholm syndrome where they get locked into these ideas of, like, global wealth taxes, that the government can do their crony capitalism and start redistributing all the taxes to create growth. And that doesn't work. And Mike is absolutely right. All net new job creation over the last decade or so, even further, comes from the small business startups. And, boy, they're getting really crushed oh. and it's and it's really really bad we are penalizing success and by the way david we have been at this with the president doing stimulus three and a half trillion dollars in government spending all the federal reserve help with still subpar economic growth that we haven't seen in decades well and steve the bottom line is not only are the small guys getting hit with taxes but regulations are just out of sight now and that's a form of tax is it not it is, David. The regulations are taxes. We learned that back in the 1980s and 1970s. And this thing, when you have these vaguely written rules, thousands of pages long, huge uncertainty, small businesses, new businesses, startups don't have the money to cope with that as large companies do. So what we're seeing now is trickle-down economics, and the Democrats were right on this one. This kind of trickle-down economics does not work. Rick, when, when the rich today. get richer and the poor get poorer, there's something wrong. Right, Rich? Well, clearly. But, you know, i got to tell you, all the analysis I'm hearing speaks to growth. I love growth, but what good is growth if you put all the money in the 1% pocket? Uh, another couple of quick points, David. That's, that's a great point, but it's been happening more during this yeah, administration. Wait, wait, that's wait, wait, the wait. point. Let me speak to that, though. You made an excellent point. You pointed out that in the Reagan years, we didn't have as big of a problem. Right. What did we have in the Reagan years that we don't have today? Tax rate cuts. No. Yes. Strong, yes. Wait, we had me, tax rate that cuts. That may be. A we lot had of strong them. Strong unions also... in the private sector no. to stand up for worker rights. We we don't have that we have anymore. also have way more taxes and way more it's, regulation no, actually, that is stalling yeah, actually, out economic true. job growth. Yeah. Listen, we have more Reagan. part time jobs. Wait, wait, hang Go on. Ahead, e we have about 400,000 more part time jobs in this economy and 153,000 less full time jobs. Not that is not growth. Inequality. You cannot have growth with part time wages like that. But That's let, really let bad. me ask the, the producers put back on the screen that income growth after the Reagan tax cuts and get Rich Carlgard to talk about this because we had these massive. Massive tax rate cuts from 70% down to 28% during the Reagan era. And look what happened. Both the bottom and the top did well. That's what we want, right? Uh, we really do want that. You know, in the mid to late 70s is a period uh, very much like the one we're living through right now, where we had a lot of bad economic policy. We had le weak leadership in Washington. We had horrible political division. And uh, it was a Democrat, uh, Paul Volcker, who worked with Reagan. Paul Volcker was the Fed chief who got interest rates up, broke the back of inflation. That combined with uh, Reagan's tax cuts unleashed this entrepreneurial right. boom that was kind of hidden beneath the surface. And all it needed, you know, was some fresh air. Right. Instead, Steve, all that's booming right now is the stock market. And that's largely because of what the Fed has been doing, feeding this, this money machine, just printing more cash, which is great for the rich, not so good for everybody else, right? Yeah, that's the form of Obama's version of a trickle-down economics, and that's why we haven't had job creation, because credit is not going to... Although we did have a good report on Friday, did we We, we had a good report on Friday, and the Wednesday. first one. But this is five it's years not, five years great. into a recovery, and we have median incomes come down. Five years, he's finally showing some signs of life. I hope it lasts. I'm in business. I want it to last. Rick, yeah, last just word. Just one final word to my friend John Tamney. I'm <clears throat> sending a bodyguard over to you today in Washington because there's a lot of people out there in the streets who may not share your point of view that income inequality well, hold on. is hold on. We've got to allow first. John to answer that. Go ahead, Tamney. <laughs> Look throughout history, it's those who get enormously rich who make our lives better. We, income inequality loves poor people. If you grow the economy, lots of inequality, but everyone will have okay. jobs and they'll have the gadgets they want. Well, I like a rising tide raises all boats, <laughs> yeah, we all do. Uh, not, it, just, it, not just the works. cruise liners.